Hi guys, um, and thanks for joining me here today where we're going to be exploring the diversity of the sector um, and the roles of women in this important and rapidly growing industry. It's nice to have you on as a company who are breaking these barriers um, with gender diversity. And as we know, there is more of an urge within this, um, but there is still a kind of clear minority within the sector. So I'm looking forward to hearing and learning about your experiences, challenges um, and successes and how Hafner Energy are striving to support this. So firstly, if you could give me a brief introduction on Hafner Energy, uh, where you guys fit in the industry and then a little bit about both of your roles within the company. Uh, thank you, Broden, for this um, introduction. So Hafner Energy designs and manufactures pioneering equipment to produce renewable fuels by sustainable biomass thermalizers. We're best known, obviously, for producing renewable hydrogen, uh, because that, that's the trendy word of the moment. <laughs> Build modular, scalable units that enable the transportation and industrial sectors to produce renewable hydrogen, as I said, and gas and fuels now. Fuels is, is very attractive at the moment, in particular, sustainable aviation fuels. Our technologies help our clients to decarbonize their activities while supporting the local businesses and the circular economy. So we have a very different model of producing energy than, than other technologies. Per the biochar is a byproduct of the thermalizers process, i.e. our te technological process. It's a solid carbon rich material that sequesters a significant amount of the carbon contained in the biomass. It can, for instance, be used as a soil amendment, and especially it is recognized as a carbon sink. It can earn carbon credits and has an immediate effect to regenerate the environment. Perfect. And a little bit about your position within Hafna, Marcella? Sure. Um, I uh, joined Hafner Energy um, in 2021. Uh, I had no previous experience in the energy world, so it was all new to me. Uh, after our IPO, I was uh, promoted to uh, Chief Marketing Director. Um, it's a fairly transversal role. Um, I work closely with the CEO, um, promoting the company more and more globally. Perfect. And Frank? So I'm the HR director uh, for After Energy. Joined a few months ago in order to help the growth of this company because it's a huge uh, subject for, for us. Amazing. Perfect. Um, so, sorry. Perfect. <laughs> so, Marcella, um, what challenges do you feel that you've faced um, during your career development as a woman um, in a male orientated industry? And what was your main drive or motivator to progress? And were there any kind of role models or people that inspired you while you were growing up? Okay, um, role model, I'll start with that. Um, this may be like a cliche, but my mother was a great role model to me. Although I did not realize this at the time. Um, my mother managed to reconcile family life with a fulfilling professional life and the social life. Um, my mother encouraged me to study and be independent and always said, invest in your education because that is something no one can take away from you. It was true then and it is true now. Oh, that's lovely. So with regards to the challenges as a woman, um, in fact, as I said, I only started in energy recently. I started my career in finance in London. I never saw being a woman as a challenge. My biggest challenge was, in fact, that I do not like pubs. I do not like beer. It was a hindrance to both work and socializing, as you probably understand. <laughs> so I worked in five different countries throughout my career. I was exposed to UK, US, Asian and continental European businesses and cultures and values and the women's role in each of them. As I said, I only joined the green hydrogen sector in 2020. And my experience is that it is a sector that is welcoming to women, even though it is industry. So the, the message that I passed on at the previous uh, conference when I was asked to speak about the role of women is 
that women in the Western world never had it so good. I, um, we have the right to vote, we have the right to drive a car, we have the right to work. They were not givens at other times, and they are not givens in the other parts of the world. For instance, when I started work, women only had three weeks maternity leave. And I can tell you when I had my kids, I did not take three weeks maternity leave because my job might not have been there after that. So it's changed. It really has changed. Further, many more women are now in management role. And in France, the statistics are fantastic. I now work for a French company. Um, curiously, uh, the Financial Times published a great article on Jen Le Pen Reti. Uh, at decision-making level that but backs up what was my perception. Uh, they did a study on this. Data from the European Institute for Gender Equality shows that women account for a third of key decision-makers in the average listed EU company. That is amazing if we consider where we're coming from. Curiously, the most progress has been made in Portugal, where I lived many years of my life, the first 18, <laughs> then I went back, but then there you go. In 10 years, from 2012 to 2022, uh, the female decision makers have grown 4.5 times. That is an amazing statistic. And the last statistic that I read in this article that really pleased me is France. France is the closest to reaching gender parity. Women make up 45% of decision makers at the largest listed companies. So we can do it. Yes, yeah, that's some great statistics. And, um, and, and we're getting closer. Yeah, definitely. Uh, women um, have traditionally been underrepresented um, in the energy space or within industry. It's like you said, you're coming from finance um, previously. What do you perceive to be the key challenges when it comes to hiring a gender neutral um, team in the sector? Interesting question, Broden. Uh, when we thought about energy, what came to mind was oil and powerful uh, petrol companies. Um, again, looking back at my first years in Korea, um, my company sent me to the London Business School to, to do a course course on corporate finance because I knew very little about it and there there were either people from banks or from oil companies and guess what they were all men <laughs> so no great surprise what I think has changed all this is energy transition and renewables those two topics have attracted a more global workforce um, women are strong at those topics and they can bring a lot. What are the key challenges for women? I view them as two areas. One being technical. Even though you look at roles played by women, for instance, at Hafner Energy, the majority of positions by women are not require non-technical skills. Uh, as an example, our CFO is a woman and myself, I'm a CMO and neither of us knows anything about engineering and workflows and the rest. Um, so to me, the challenge is to encourage women to do more engineering jobs. The other challenge is um, the factory environment, uh, often not suited to women, Toilets are a disaster, lifting heavy equipment, tough conditions, not ideal. What I see as the hope there is to make a more welcoming environment, more automated, and also to benefit from artificial intelligence when designing and working in factories. That I think is the way it's going to in fact create a more pleasant environment for everyone to work, not just women, but more suited to women. So for me, however, the energy transition challenge is more of a societal challenge than a technical one. And this is where women have a great role to play. 
Women are sensitive to environment causes. They are gifted with persuasion skills, aren't we? And <laughs> equipped with emotional intelligence, uh, relatively, let's say. Uh, women inclusive touch is important in an ecosystem where there is room for everyone to grow side by side rather than compete. And, and, and I think this is a, an important skill that women have. They are encouraged to work together, whereas men are fighters and they are warriors and it's all about crushing your enemy. It's, it's in our genes, let's say. <laughs> Maybe you will get crucified for saying that, but anyway. Um, women can bring their sensitive skills to the table of what to me is the major challenge of this generation, awareness of climate change issues and making the energy transition happen. Amazing. Yeah, that I definitely agree with that in terms of kind of the technical backgrounds of women um, there hasn't been kind of a, a strong point on them taking those engineering degrees and stuff, but we are seeing a lot more. And I think obviously within women in green hydrogen as well, there are a lot more kind of engineers who are women. Exactly. So it is nice to see. Um, and hopefully that just continues to grow.